nephew community. I hope you are all doing well. My name is Jamini Patel and I am a nephrology medical science liaison with Otsuka Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization Inc. I'm here with my colleague, Lisa Voigt, who is also a nephrology medical science liaison at Otsuka and who will be co-moderating this discussion with me. Today, we are joined by Jennifer Payton and we're going to be discussing mental health and self-care in nephrology nurses. Jennifer is currently the ANNA National President and the Director of Regulatory Compliance for the National Dialysis Accreditation Commission. She has been a nephrology nurse for 25 years. Her experience includes outpatient hemodialysis, home dialysis, education, administration, and regulatory compliance. She has been an author for the Nephrology Nursing Journal and the Contemporary Nephrology Nursing Textbook. She has also been a frequent presenter at the American Nephrology Nurses Association chapter and national meetings on various topics. She has been active in ANNA for many years and is currently the national president. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today. We're really excited to have you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So we'll just get right into it. You know, this is a conversation about uh, mental health and self-care and nephrology nurses, but sometimes I, I don't think, you know, our providers really understand what a nephrology nurse really does. So can you explain the role of a nephrology nurse and how would you characterize their roles and responsibilities? So the role of a nephrology nurse is to complete and manage the care of patients with all stages of kidney disease. So it's a very complex medical diagnosis and disease process that nurses manage that, nephrology nurses do. And that role could include dialysis, could be a nurse in an outpatient setting, they could be in a hospital, it could be an advanced practice nurse that's taking care of a group of patients in dialysis, it could be a home nurse taking care of patients that do their dialysis at home, there's case management, we do the delegation of some of the responsibilities and oversight of that of non-licensed professionals. It, there's a long list of things that nephrology nurses do, but it's all for the care of the patients with kidney disease. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, it's, you know, a really multifaceted role. And I really do believe that you know, nephrology without nephrology nurses, uh, it'd be very, very difficult to care appropriately for our kidney patients. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and Jamie, you make a great point. And um, so Jennifer, we know that nurses spend a significant amount of time directly with patients. And sometimes the only healthcare provider they see, maybe even for that day or, you know, that week. So what would you say, how much time does the nephrology nurse spend with a patient versus a nephrologist? Well, depending on the setting, the nurse may spend hours with a patient in a in a day. It you know, patients that come in for hemodialysis typically are in the dialysis chair for you know three or four hours, and then they've got to be assessed by the nurse before the treatment and after the treatment. So they may be under the care of the nephrology nurse for hours, where physicians will come in and they will spend. A, the nephrologist will spend a much shorter amount of time. You know, they have multiple facilities to go to and lots of patients to see, but the, the care of the patient for a long period of time is done by the nephrology nurse. And also in the, you know, in clinic settings or in the setting where a patient is being trained to do dialysis at home, they may be trained for hours at a time for multiple days a week for a couple weeks, depending on the modality that they choose. So nephrology nurses spend a significant amount of time with the patients in which we care. And having said that, how do you think this impacts the nurse's workload? Well, you know, we, we work in so many different areas, case management, education, administration. There are so many different areas that we work in, it's, you know, we're, we're in the middle of a nursing shortage right now. So we're working, we're doing more with, with less nurses or trying to do more with less nurses. So um, 
the caseload varies, but but it's it's pretty significant. You know, Jennifer, I can imagine, you know, having to spend hours and hours with the patient, often for a very long portion of the day. I know sometimes nurses can work upwards of, you know, 10, 12 hours. You know, you wonder what toll that takes on a nurse's mental health. And we know, you know, just from healthcare in general, uh, it's evident that mental health is a significant concern within the nursing profession. And I, you know, I know as an ICU pharmacist, I know Lisa as well, we've seen firsthand how incredibly hard nurses work and how little support they can have sometimes. How would you describe the overall climate of mental health in nephrology nurses? Mental health of nurses in all specialties right now is a major concern of mine. One of my focuses of this year as the American Nephrology Nurses Association president is to focus on mental health and self-care of the nephrology nurse. Um, there are so many different different aspects. Nurses are stressed, they're frustrated, they're exhausted. There was a study that was done by the American Nurses Foundation that was published this year that said that 50% of nurses that participated in this study of over 12,000, 50% of the nurses felt some level of burnout. These things can lead to deficits in concentration, communication makes time management harder. Um, all of these things we need to take into consideration and we need to put the nurse first. Sometimes the nurses don't wanna put themselves first. We care for our patients, we care for our families, we care for patients with complex medical diseases and we forget to take care of ourselves. And, uh, and I agree, Jennifer, and you, you know, you sort of touched on, you know, sort of what's causing the burnout. I don't know if you want to expand on that a little bit more, but I guess more importantly, how do we begin to recognize that? Well, you know, there, there's stress, there's um, compassion fatigue. That's one of the things you were talking about when you're working with patients for, for hours on in a day and you, um, you see the the multiple disease processes and the issues that these patients are facing each and every day. Nurses can have stress, they can have compassion fatigue from that. You know, they're trying to give everything they can to the patient and they're not giving enough for themselves. So when we when we have burnout, we see mental and physical exhaustion. There are things like, um, mentally trying to distance yourself from your job and it reduces the efficiency in the workplace. It Nurses can't do their job as efficiently as they need to when they're feeling burned out. You make a great point. I know, you know, a lot of nurses who I used to work with, they even were at a point where they left the profession or even left to go you know, work in a different setting of nursing altogether because of how burned out they were feeling. And I can imagine, you know, when you're in a, a situation already of shortage of nurses, that that's not certainly helping the problem and, uh, you know, certainly not exciting future nurses about the prospects of nursing. And it's definitely uh, a time for change and significant awareness for how to put our nurses first and take care of them uh, as well. And, you know, self-care has been a huge buzz phrase these last few years, especially since the pandemic. And, and more so than a buzz phrase, it really can help us to rejuvenate from the stresses of life. What kind of self-care activities might nephrology nurses or really any nurse engage in to help reduce the burnout and help them re-energize themselves? Well, first we have to acknowledge that self-care is important. You know, so many times we don't acknowledge that self-care is important. We prioritize the patient before ourselves. And when we do that, 
we're we're harming ourselves and and not able to care for the patient as much as we should. There are many self care activities. There are things like trying a new hobby, you know, doing simple things, listening to audio books. When you leave work, try to leave your work at work. It's very difficult to do that. Many times nephrology nurses are on call, so they can't do that. But if you're not at work, trying to leave that work there. Um, doing things like making a meal plan for the week, you know, uh, so that you're not coming home exhausted. And then you're like, oh, what's for dinner tonight? And everyone's asking you and you're like, I, I don't know. It's one more decision I need to make that I that I'm not ready to make right now. So, um, you know, doing things like being mindful with meditation, keeping a gratitude journal, you know, and, and making sure that we're not forgetting our own health. COVID taught us all that um, preventative care is so important during COVID. There were people that went months and months past their six month or annual physicals and didn't get the care that they needed and things got missed because they didn't want to go out. They didn't want to, well, nurses say, oh, I don't have the time to take care of myself. I have everyone else to take care of. So really prioritizing that and taking care, making sure that you're putting yourself first is really important as a nephrology nurse. I couldn't agree more, Jennifer. And I read, you know, your president's message and it's entitled self-care for nephrology nurses. And I really love how you touched on all the things, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, and social and all the topics. And you did also, um, you talked about personal and also professional. So, you you know, you you want to keep your professional life on track as well as your personal life. But really, you know, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head when you talked about nurses are, are great about taking care of others, you know, but not always about themselves. And so I just really thought that was a great message. The other uh, one of the other questions uh, we had. So what do you believe needs to change in the nephrology practice model or even in the nursing practice model to reduce this type of burnout in nurses or and especially nephrology nurses? Well, you know, just education. We need to educate everyone about the importance of of nurses taking care of themselves. We need to work on the the nursing staffing crisis that we're that we're in right now. If we don't have enough nurses, then nurses are going to be more stressed at work. They're going to they're going to have larger patient to to nurse ratios. They're going to be they're going to be caring for larger numbers of patients. They're going to be having to, um, you know, make difficult decisions about what care comes before other care. If there aren't enough nurses, they're working overtime. They're working extra shifts and extra days. We really need to get a handle on the staffing crisis that we have in this country right now. You know, you bring up some excellent points, Jennifer. Um, you know, it's it's clear that something definitely needs to change. And, you know, you hit on some major points there, especially with the staffing shortage, um, you know, nurses putting themselves first. What would you like physicians, you know, because physicians interact with nurses significantly on a daily basis, certainly without nurses, no physician's office is going to function at all. What would you like physicians to know about caring for their nurses mental health. But just, you know, physicians and everyone else, we all need to make sure that we understand that the mental health of our nurses is important. Nurses are on the front lines caring for patients. Nephrology nurses, you know, are caring for patients with very complex medical issues, as I've said before. And that can really help, you know, can cause mental health issues. It can increase burnout. It can increase depression. Unfortunately, due to job stress, nurses have a higher risk of suicide than the general population. You know, we need nurses to stop and think about their own mental health and everyone else around us to be focused on that as well. Um, there are resources out there that can help 
reduce that burnout, depression, and suicide. You know, it starts with self-care, but it goes on into, into actually going and getting treatment and getting help if you've gone past past the point of just being fatigued and exhausted and you've got depression and you've got anxiety and these other mental health issues that we don't always like to talk about, um, you know, there, there is help out there and nurses need to know that and everyone else needs to make sure that as they are working with nurses that they, you know, sometimes we don't see what's in front of us in the mirror and we need others to help us with that as well. Those, those are excellent points and I couldn't agree more. And you, you bring up a great point about other people have to step up and help. It can't just be the responsibility, you know, of one nurse or, you know, trying to take matters um, into, or into her own hands or his hands or, you know, trying to fight the uphill battle. And so are there any advocacy efforts ongoing to help address the mental health in the nephrology nursing community? So is there anything that the ANNA is doing or other professional organizations um, on the advocacy front? Well, um, ANNA has advocacy efforts to help focus on one of the things that we discussed today, which was the national nurse staffing crisis that we're currently in. Um, we're actually having a health policy workshop that will be in Washington, D.C. in a couple of weeks, and that's going to include visits to Capitol Hill to discuss issues such as staffing ratios and such as issues with um, issues with the crisis that we have right now and more funding for nursing education. We're part of coalitions that work to get um, more funding for nursing education so we can get more nurses into the pipeline. I'm really happy to hear that and I'm, I'm excited to see what comes out of that. And um, I look forward to the posts from ANNA and uh, all the, you know, the publications, you know, to, to make even the public aware, you know, of what's going on um, in the nursing um, community. I mean, I think this has been very enlightening and eye-opening. Jennifer, I guess, do you have any other closing comments or summary points that you wanted to make before we close? I just want to remind us all that the mental health of the nurse is important for everyone. The mental health and the self-care of the nurse, because nurses are the ones that take care of us when we're sick. Nurses are the ones that that take care of us when we're well to help with, you know, to help with routine, routine preventative maintenance as well. And we just need to make sure that we're remembering the nurse and helping take care of the nurse. It's actually in a few weeks comes um, the uh, National Nephrology Nurses Week is in September. And um, that's a time if you're around a nephrology nurse, make sure to thank them for all that they do each and every day. Okay, I, I completely agree. And uh, that's, that's a great point. <laughs> and I think we should all do that. Um, but these have been great insights. And Jennifer, thank you so much for giving us your time and speaking to us on this important topic. Thank you for everyone for tuning in today. We hope you uh, enjoyed listening and learned something new during this podcast. And again, these podcasts are also available on Apple, Google, and Spotify. So to be sure to like and subscribe to the Nephew Podcast channel on whichever platform you use. And with that, I think we will close and I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.